Hi, I'm Ryan Samansky, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. We get questions all the time about differences between the four completed Iowa-class battleships. And uh, there, there's a lot of them, really small things by and large, certainly nothing that uh, changes the combat power of any one of them more or less. However, uh, one of the most interesting differences is the weights of the various ships. As built, if you completely unload these ships, New Jersey ends up being the lightest, followed by Iowa, with Missouri and Wisconsin uh, being significantly heavier. Well, not significantly. We're, we're talking about tens of thousands of tons here, uh, but noticeably heavier, let's say. The difference comes down to a handful of armor plates. Just about everything else I won't say it's identical, but it's similar enough where we had an SK-1 radar, they had an SK-2, they're more or less the same weight, it's a wash. Like, that, that's not a big deal. The, the big differences, like I said, are in the armor. New Jersey has the least extra armor of all the ships, and so she ends up about 57,500 tons total. Iowa has approximately 300 extra tons. That is concentrated in her armored conning tower here in the superstructure. A standard Iowa-class battleship has a two-level armored conning tower that weighs about 600 tons. Uh, one level's on the 04 level, that's where the captain cons the ship in battle. The other level's on the 05 level, that is the uh, third fire control position for the main battery guns, or spot three. Iowa has an extra layer of her conning tower that is armored. That is on the O3 level for an admiral. They lightly compensated for this by removing one of the 40 millimeter guns from Iowa. So she always had four less 40 millimeter barrels, but three more 20 millimeter barrels. This didn't really compensate for the weight though. Uh, more realistically, the 40 millimeter gun was on a raised mount, which blocked the view slits in that armored conning tower. So by replacing that, with a turret top level 20 millimeter gun tub, the Admiral could look out over that. Uh, to really compensate for that weight, you'd have to remove two of the five inch gun mounts. We see this on South Dakota, which is also fitted as a fleet flagship. And so she only has 16 five inch guns instead of the 20 of the other nine American fast battleships. The Iowa class battleships were authorized across several different years. And so, uh, they were laid down during consecutive years. There were opportunities to make additions to the base plan because of the delays in laying down subsequent ships. So for example, when Iowa and New Jersey are authorized, long lead items such as armor plate is, uh, immediately has contracts let and they start production of that. But for Missouri, Wisconsin, Illinois, and Kentucky authorized the next year, there was enough time to modify the design and add a little bit extra armor. When World War II began, it negated the treaty system that limited the Iowa-class battleships to 45,000 tons standard displacement. So, the Navy was able to add additional armor plate. The main differences were up here at bulkhead 50, just forward of turret number one, and back here at bulkhead 166, just aft of turret number three. These are your forward and aft armored bulkheads. They are what create the ends of the armored citadel on the ship. On Iowa and New Jersey, those are 11.3 inches thick. That gets the ships under the treaty standards. On Missouri and Wisconsin, those are 14 and a half inches thick. And when you're stepping uh, through onto the mess deck or uh, into the berthing spaces up forward where this armored deck begins, you can really tell the difference in that armor depth when you're going on. This extra armor added a bunch of weight, especially up forward. Back aft, the armored bulkhead is only one deck tall, and then it meets with the armored box that goes over the refrigerators and the steering gear. But up forward, the armored bulkhead is uh, pretty much the full height of the hull. It starts on second deck, and then it does taper in thickness down towards the bottom, just like the armored belts on the side of the ship. 
However, uh, it, it's got a much larger run here. So that adds about 500 tons of weight to the ship, probably 350 or 400 tons of that up on the forward end of the vessel. So that puts New Jersey somewhere around uh, 57,500 tons fully loaded with the later Iowa-class battleships being an even 58,000 tons. Interestingly, Illinois and Kentucky could have ended up even lighter than New Jersey. And that would have been interesting for the ship's speeds. Uh, roughly every thousand tons you're able to subtract from an Iowa-class battleship, you add an extra quarter knot of speed to those ships. Where they were getting their uh, weight reductions was from switching from riveted construction to all welded. Now it's been said that they were gonna be all welded, but construction photos of them do clearly show rivets inside the ship. So, uh, th so there would have definitely been more welding than on the previous Iowa-class battleships as the United States shipbuilding industry became more comfortable with it. But it doesn't seem like it is as exclusive as other history books seem to claim. However, a rough rule of thumb is you can shave off uh, maybe even as much as 10% of the weight of your hull by going from riveting to welding. Uh, not only is the rivet more mass than a weld bead, but riveted plates have to overlap. So that's adding additional mass there as opposed to welded plates that are butted up to each other. Illinois and Kentucky could have easily shaved somewhere from 1,000 to maybe even as much as 5,000 tons off of their displacement uh, by switching to all riveted construction compared to a, a standard Iowa-class battleship. And that, could have, that would have bought them less weight and therefore more speed. However, the US Navy has a great tradition of reusing that weight that's lost, so maybe it would have been brought back in the form of additional armor uh, or additional anti-aircraft guns. Whatever the case, by the time those ships would have been completed, it certainly would not have been to the base Iowa-class design like New Jersey. Not only was New Jersey the lightest as built, but she deploys to combat in the lightest configuration of any of the ships. This is during Vietnam, because at that time she's removed all of her World War II era anti-aircraft guns, but she has not yet added the missiles that would be installed in the 80s that actually increase her weight beyond her original World War II uh, displacement. So uh, the weight definitely corresponds to this ship attaining the highest speed of any of the Iowa-class battleships in 1968. Interestingly, today, I believe Iowa sits at the heaviest displacement. Uh, they have ballasted their ship uh, much more level than us, Missouri, or Wisconsin, as far as I know. And so uh, they, they are likely sitting closer to 47,000 tons, where the rest of us are somewhere around 45,000 tons. And if you check out the, the ship's draft markings, that can confirm that. What do you think? Was the extra armor worth it? Do you think the uh, extra armor added to later Iowa-class battleships gave them greater combat power? Or do you think having less armor and therefore more speed or more room for growth was more important? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.